Manchester United have just received a £23 million bid from Fulham for Scott McTominay. PSG reportedly ready to accept a loan with an obligation to buy for Manuel Ugarte and the truth about Lenny Yoro's injury revealed. These are some of the stories we will be discussing on the show. But before we get into that, please do me one small favor. Smash a like on today's video. Let's try and see a thousand likes on this episode. And if this is your first time watching, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm live every single day at 8.30, 1.30 and 6. So make sure you all get involved, right? Uh, I want to start talking about Lenny Yoro. So obviously we all know that Lenny Yoro is going to be out for around three months with a uh, metatarsal tear, which is a bone in your foot, I believe. And there's been loads and loads of people on Twitter saying that apparently PSG didn't buy him because they found out he was injury prone. There was this story circulating Twitter and then there was Liverpool fans saying, oh, we didn't buy him either because he's injury prone. And then Real Madrid fans started piping up. Uh, and now Fabrizio Romano has come out and squashed all of those rumours. He says reports of other clubs pulling out of the race to sign Lenny Yoro because of him being injury prone are all false. He says that all the clubs wanted to sign Yoro PSG, Liverpool and Real Madrid, they all wanted him. And he goes on to say that Manchester United are not worried about Lenny Yoro's long-term fitness. He has been very unlucky with this compact uh, injury, uh, sorry, contact injury. His medical tests were perfect. So it's just complete luck, bad luck, effectively, that Lenny Yoro got this injury. Um, he's not any, had any injury problems in the past. He's only missed one game for injury in his whole career and it makes you think are we cursed because maybe we are you know what is the luck he plays 45 minutes of pre-season and he's out for three months like it's yeah but i just wanted to bring you that news because i don't want people to uh buy into this whole narrative that rival fans are trying to spread that he's injury prone and they didn't want him anyway and they didn't buy him because he's injury prone because it's all rubbish okay so i just wanted to clear that up um but yeah let's move on from that and let's jump straight on over to manuel ugarte so this is coming out from liquip in the last couple of minutes, breaking news that PSG are now willing to accept a paid loan for Manuel Ugarte with a high option to buy included. I would take that in a heartbeat. I really, really would. I think if we do this paid loan option, it's very little risk. It'll be very similar to what we did with Amrabat last season. I think we gave Fiorentina maybe 10 million euros to loan him for the year. And then at the end of that period, we there was an option to buy him. Uh, obviously, we didn't end up buying Amrabat, but I think it makes way more sense to do that with Ugarte because as much as I want him, I think spending 70 million euros on him now is a massive risk. And I and I personally wouldn't do that. So I would more than happily accept PSG's proposal here where we take him on loan for one season. We pay them a big fee, probably around 10 million euros. Uh, and then at the end of the season, this season coming, we then have the option to buy him. Uh, probably it'll probably be for around 60, 70 million euros. They're going to want the top price for him. But if he comes and does amazingly, then we have that option to buy him. If he comes and doesn't do very well, then we don't. So I think it's a really, really good deal this because, as I just said, paying 70 million up front for him doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think he's worth that much money. I don't think we have the budget to do that. And I think PSG are just being a bunch of jokers, to be honest. They've just signed Joao Neves. They don't need him anymore. He spent most of last season sat on the bench and he wants to leave. So let's get this deal over the line. Let's do this paid loan. Uh, that will that will fill one of the midfield positions. And then that should allow us to go and sign uh, a Fafana or a Zubamendi or a Rabio as a backup option. So that's what needs to happen. And hopefully Ineos go and do that. But obviously you can let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. I think Overall, it's the best case scenario for Manchester United. It means we don't have to spend too much money this year. It means that we get to effectively try him before we buy him. If he comes and does well, we buy him. If he doesn't do well, we don't have to buy him. It's a, it's a win-win. So definitely a good bit of news this, and hopefully we can get this wrapped up today or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, moving on from that, I want to jump over to Scott McTominay. So this is being reported by Fabrizio Romano, Manchester Evening News, Samuel Luckhurst, that apparently Fulham have just submitted a bid of £23 million for Scott McTominay. They had a bid rejected last week of £17 million. Uh, Manchester United apparently are still asking for 25 to £30 million. So we're getting a little bit closer to the magic number that Manchester United want to ask. The bid hasn't been rejected yet, just to be very, very clear. They're still considering whether they want to accept it. And I want you, the Manchester United fan, to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Should Manchester United accept Fulham's bid of £23 million for Scott McTominay? Please consider all of the things. He's got one year left of his deal, 27 years of age. He's not on big wages, to be fair. So that's obviously something to consider. But the alternative is either give him a new deal, 
He'll probably want a four-year contract. So we'd still have McTominay here at the age of 31. He'll probably want a pay increase. He's currently on about 60K a week at the moment. So I imagine he would probably go up to around 100K a week. And it might then mean that we don't have the funds to buy a new midfielder. Obviously, he's come through the Youth Academy. So it would be 100% profit, which will really, really help our ability to spend this summer. Uh, and to be honest, I would take the 23 million. If we could get 23 guaranteed, plus maybe seven to 10 in add-ons. So the total deal would be worth maybe 30, 33 million pounds. I think that would be a fair price for McTominay when you consider the contract length and all the rest of it, his age. Uh, he would go to Fulham. He'd be a starting player. He'd probably do really well. But at Manchester United, I just don't think there's a space for him in the team, to be honest. Like he's most effective further up the pitch and we don't need him further up the pitch. We've got Mount, we've got Bruno, uh, we've got Xerxy, like we've got Hoyland, we've got Ahmad. Like we've got all of these attacking players who are desperate for game time. And McTominay's only really effective when you chuck him further up the pitch. If you put him as the CDM, the, the, the lone six, he's completely ineffective and he completely ghosts in the game, doesn't he? I think we'd all agree on that. So as an impact sub for Manchester United, Scott McTominay, I think, is one of the best. But as a starting midfielder, uh, I don't think he offers what we need. And if this narrative is true that we need to sell to buy, and we have this player here with one year left of his deal who would be 100% profit, you have to sell him. You do. And I think, to be honest, with McTominay now, it's a matter of when, not if. Obviously, he has to still agree to go to, to Fulham. He might turn around and say, I don't want to go to Fulham, which is a possibility. But then if you flip that on its head, he has apparently already agreed personal terms with Galatasaray. And I mean, Galatasaray are in the Champions League. They are a bigger club than Fulham, to be fair. But if he was willing to go to Galatasaray, I imagine he'd probably be willing to go to Fulham. Again, that's just me assuming. But based on the fact that he has agreed terms with Galatasaray, uh, obviously Galatasaray's bid is half of what Fulham's is. So he's not going to go there. But he has apparently said he would be willing to go there if, you know, the terms were agreed between the two clubs. So yeah, that's the latest on Scott McTominay. Obviously, if McTominay goes, it will open the door for us to go and get Ugarte, maybe a, a Fafana, a Zubamendi, a Rabio. I would expect two midfielders to be signed if uh, if McTominay leaves. It will probably be uh, Manuel Ugarte with this paid loan deal, which I think is great. Great business. No problems with that. And then I think it will either be Rabio, Zubamendi or Fafana. One of those three options. Potentially still Amrabat is an option, but uh, the Amrabat to Manchester United stories have gone very, very quiet lately. So I... I, I doubt that Amrabat will be coming unless um, unless there's an absolute, you know, crazy injury crisis. Uh, and just to give you the full picture as well, Manchester United have apparently told McTominay that he is uh, available to leave. So effectively, they've said you're not going to be a first team player. You're going to be sat on the bench. So he has been told that he is allowed to leave effectively. He's allowed to speak to Fulham, allowed to talk personal terms and stuff. Um, they've effectively told him that as long as the valuation is met, which is apparently 25 to 30 million, they will happily sell him. So uh, the writing's on the wall really, isn't it? If your manager comes to you and say like, you're not needed here anymore, we want rid of you. And then another club comes along, in, in this case, Fulham, and says, we'll make you the first team central midfielder. Um, we will you know, in increase your wages, we'll give you a four-year deal. Like, I'm sure McTominay's head would be turned and he would then uh, consider that deal. But um, obviously, I'll keep you updated on the McTominay situation. As I said, the bid hasn't been rejected yet, just to be very, very clear. £23 million bid from Fulham, not rejected yet, but apparently United are asking for 25 to 30 million. So I, I think this will get done. Um, obviously, the players are back from America on Sunday, which is in like, what, two days. So um, medicals and stuff will probably happen next week. wan the same. So yeah, that's the latest on that one. I'm going to wrap the video up here, guys. Please make sure to smash a like on the video before you leave. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and make sure to let me know whether you would accept the £23 million bid from for McTominay from Fulham. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll speak to you all on the next one. Bye for now.